Thank you. Well, thank you very much to the organizers for the conference. And well, this is the last conference of the day. So I have the hard task to keep you awake during 20, 25 minutes. Um, so the, the presentation will, I will divide the presentation in three sections. The first one would be the introduction, um, just like that. The second one will be the uh, one very quick and brief review of exper uh, experiments, so the experimental part. And the last part will be the model itself, the model which I call consciousness interaction. Um, I have two, two news about that. The first one is I will need to rush probably to do all these things. And the good news is that we are ready done with this one. So I would like to ask you uh, how many meanings does consciousness have? What do you think? How many meanings, con connotations, etc.? Thousands. Thousands? Twenty? Twelve? It's not bad. Not bad. Okay, if you review the li literature and bi bi uh, bibliography, you can find between 20, 26 to more than 40 different connotations of consciousness. It means in some way that you can approach consciousness with different aspects. That's, inter that's quite interesting because maybe we are answering the question about mechanisms in different ways because we approach differently. Interestingly, even if, even and independently of your philosophical, post, uh, philosophical ideas or, or color, or as you want to call it, actually I will try to be neutral about that, you need to explain some signatures that you observe in, uh, in the brain. So let's review some of them. Um, for example, in the resting brain, you can, uh, you can find this anticorrelate, Maybe it's better here. You can find uh, different anticorrelated networks. And this anticorrelation of this activity can be simulated with uh, dynamical systems um, at the edge of the criticality. And also, you need to add a bit of noise. Interestingly, this noise can be explained in part, but not entirely, but by the brain body coupling or philosophical coupling. Um, you, f you, you see that these couplings change. Uh, of course, I don't have to explain everything here, but uh, believe me that these couplings change when you use uh, different anesthetics and also when you are in different stage of sleep. Most interestingly, these couplings influence your perception. So, in, well, yeah. And yeah, well, we, you, we don't have time to explain this picture here, but, but the point is that from these couplings, you can suggest a subjective frame. These couplings are related to metabolism. Um, we know now that there is uh, a minimal energetic requirement which is connected with the recovering of disorders of consciousness. And quite impressed, the astrocytes are involved in this recovery. Then if you try to characterize the dynamics of disorders of consciousness, you can see that different states reduce to a few of them, dyna few, few dynamical states. And you can actually recover some of these uh, dynamics just using the brain stimulation. Um, in anesthesia, you also have similar signatures, but not exactly the same signatures. And very interestingly, you have asymmetries between the induction and the emergence from, from anesthesia. Also, you have two different ways to emerge from anesthesia. One is the gradual, and another one is a kind of abrupt or sudden emergence. So that's interesting too, for the point that I will make later. Um, during the sleep, you also see different physiological uh, changes, different dynamics trans transitions, but these transitions are more natural and are more gradual too. For example, if you see what happens in, 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 
when you are dreaming, you have uh, a correlation of activity in the parietal occipital cortex, uh, which is the middle back of your brain. But then if you compare this data with, uh, with experiments on conscious perception um, with awake subjects, you can find a very strong evidence of auditory activity from the frontal cortex. And also, you, as you can see here, the trajectory, the brain trajectory, when you see or when you observe or when you are aware of some stimuli, it's totally different to the opposite condition. All of these things are quite classical in, in, in some way. And then, finally, from experiments on psychology, you can define different systems associated with two different aspects of consciousness. The first aspect is what we call uh, awareness of content, and the second aspect is awareness of, uh, of the processing on these contents. It means, um, and we can call this self-reference. So, taking all these things together, now it's not surprising that when you ask people what are the mechanisms of consciousness, they will, they will answer differently. And this is a quite serious part. Some of them will answer with broadcasting. Maybe others will answer with integration. And more recently, and please not offense, actually I like this one, they are answering with harmonic modes or things like that. <laughs> but wait, maybe we are in a superposition of, of all these interpretations and mechanisms. So um, now, <laughs> Well, we are done with this part too. So, summarizing all this evidence, and of course more than this evidence, uh, can suggest different aspects of consciousness, different brain-body systems, and different uh, transitions. And we would like to explain all of them in one theory, or at least I would like to do it. We, we need to explain how these systems interact. Um, we would like to explain the asymmetries between induction and emergence in anesthesia, the differences between sleep states and anesthesia, and also the apparent network dissociations of experience or dreaming experience, access consciousness, and self-reference. So how we can do that? Um, that's the question. <laughs> well. To try to explain or connect all these things, uh, I will define something that I called a multi-layer model, but probably I should call it multi-membrane model or something like that, because it's not just reduced to the simple idea of a uh, network. And the first, uh, well, the, the, this model is divided in four hypotheses that you can mathematically axiomatize or as you want, do a lot of things with that, but for now I just call them hypotheses because you can test that in, in, in experiments. Um, the first hypothesis is that you can divide the brain and the body into different systems. These different systems can be described with, the, with any mathematical, uh, with your mathematical, with any mathematical theory that you would like. For example, here you can describe these layers with process, uh, like process theories, as we saw uh, in Sean in Shun uh, uh, talk, but you can also describe them uh, like networks, like dynamic systems, or like topological spaces. Um, of course, you will define them differently in all these different uh, forms. But the important thing is that to define them, you need the second hypothesis. And the second hypothesis is that these layers should be closed and self-regulated. It means that you need autopoietic parts here, and autopoietics will mean that the whole and the parts are mutually defined. These layers are independent, they have local dynamics, and uh, the dynamics is determined by the layer, layer boundaries. So then you have the third hypothesis, which these layers, it, it mean, uh, the, the third hypothesis is that these layers can interact. When they interact, you break the local dynamic, you generate new dynamics, global ones, 
you generate new symmetries, you can define different interactions, and you can also define rules of compositions if these coupled systems uh, are also closed and self-regulated. The four hypotheses, which it's connected with consciousness, it's that this interaction defines consciousness aspects. For example, here you have the first, the first uh, transition, uh, which, uh, and a start and, and a new interaction between, between these two layers, a second transi transition, third one, and then many others. The point here is, topologically speaking, you, with the first and second transition, you create local path between these layers. And the third and next transitions, you, you start to play with a global topological path. The interpretation of that is the first trans transitions, the first transition is related to arousal, the second one to subjectivity and awareness, and the third one to self-reference. And finally, the, the, the five hypotheses is that degree types, intersections, and numbers of layers interacting define the content of your experience. That's not so um, far off other theories, actually. But there are some differences. Um, so what we can do with these things? Well, you can explain some stuff, and you can predict others. I don't have time to explain more than what I will say here, but basically you can suggest that the complexity of your experience is related to the numbers of layers that you connect. How you define these layers, uh, actually you can define different layers inside the brain, but also you can define different layers like autonom autonomic systems and things like that uh, in the body. Um, so one prediction would be that if you have more layers def uh, defined in your system, you would be, your experience would be probably more complex than other animals with less number of layers. Then you, mathematically you, and experimentally, you can also define some distance between these, uh, these layers or, or an angle to measure different aspects of consciousness. You also can define, or you can also explain the difference between sleep states depending on how you couple these systems or how you don't. And in anesthesia, you would explain the differences between anesthetics, for example, just disrupting one of these layers but not others. Finally, uh, something that I think is quite interesting, at least for me, um, the idea of local sections, new sections, global sections in topology can help us also to explain or to connect these ideas or these models with uh, contextuality, quantum contextuality or cognitive contextuality. And eventually, and now I'm not speaking about realizations, but the mathematical structure that you can find here, it may be help us to solve other problems in, um, about physical theories. So, just to finish, almost, one very concrete prediction about, on, on this model is that when the state of awake increase, the interconnectivity between layers will increase. But, when, but in the opposite side, when awake increase, the intraconnectivity of one layer, for example, will decrease. And actually, some data here, and these guys, suggest and support part of this prediction. Actually, I, I knew about these guys after, uh, after work on these things, um, which is kind of interesting, at least for me, and I hopefully for you too. Uh, so finally, the model also attempts to generalize other models where you can define the structure of the, mo of the model, in this case, global world space theory or IIT, depending on the number of layers and the interactions, physical and biological interactions that they define in their theories. So in this case, for example, global workspace would correspond to a fixed multilayer, um, and IIT would correspond to only one layer, but time evolving. So it's a subtle big difference. Um, Finally, 
Nice. I think that I have enough time. Yes? You have 10 minutes. Whoa, great. Nice. Five, five minutes and then five minutes for questions. Perfect. So I will come back. And uh, no, it's a joke. Uh, so finally, just to, to finish the presentation, um, well, of course, uh, now I just show you a very brief part of the of the model. But the main the main idea now is to formalize this uh, conceptual description using process theories. Or what people call uh, operational uh, physical theories, to reason about consciousness uh, and the causal structures that can be involved on the, on the generation of consciousness, different aspects of consciousness. The, the second part of the research plan is uh, extend the mathematical formalism to characterize the different theories that we know until now and explain them in a common way, like, like the diagram that we saw from, from Sean in the, in, the, in the presentation. One idea is to show or probably show the compabil com com compatibility between global workspace theory and NIT, and maybe surpass them to get a new and better theory. And finally, of course, the hypothesis can be tested, depending on how you define the, the, the layers, of course. Uh, with phenomenological approaches, with computational simulations, and with other empirical tests. So the main point here, and all this point, yeah, the main point of all these points, actually, it's that uh, collaboration here is kind of crucial for all, of, for all of us in all the new models that we would like to develop or the models that already, already exist, because understanding consciousness and understanding the new technologies to save lives or, or, or improve uh, the, the science of consciousness itself, anesthetics, etc. It's not about one person or one model or one theory. It's probably about one community working together with the same goal of understanding consciousness. So that's my presentation and thank you very much.